So today I'm going to talk about priority queues and heap sort. I assume that up to this point you have you you have a fair fairly well idea a fairly good idea of what insertion sort is, what merge sort is. Uh, you have gone through asymptotic complexity analysis and maybe a few simple divide and conquer algorithms. So what I'm discussing here corresponds to chapter six in the textbook Introduction to Algorithms by Corman, Lyserson, Rivest, and Stein. And you can, uh, and, and this chapter is also gonna be the, uh, the reading for this uh, talk. So let me first start by defining what a priority queue is. A priority queue is a data structure of items with keys which supports two basic operations. And the two operations are inserting a new item and removing an item uh, removing an item and specifically not just any item but the item with the largest key so a priority queue is a data structure of items with keys so basically each item each item is, you know, you can assume that each item has a key field and it has a data field. And it's really the key field which corresponds in some way to the priority of each item. So each item is associated with a priority, which is nothing but the value of the key, the value of the key field in it. So we need to store a set of these items into a data structure which needs to support these two basic operations. We should be able to insert a new item into the into this data structure and we should be able to remove the item with the largest key. There are actually two variants of this data structure. In one variant, we need to support this operation where we remove the item with the largest key, but it's very easy to slightly change the way we build this data structure to handle an operation where we remove the item with the smallest key. So basically the operations are just gonna be uh, complementary of one another. So if we understand how this is done, we can easily build uh, you know, uh, an analogous data structure which will support uh, the operation where you remove the minimum item instead of the maximum or the largest item. Now, since you have already gone through a course on data structures, you probably know that different applications may require different sets of operations. And so there are accordingly different data structures to support those operations. So what sort of applications would require these two kinds of operations? Well, let me give you an example. So an example where you need to support these two operations is an event-driven simulation. So let's say you're building a simulation system that is supporting, uh, that is simulating some events. So maybe you could be supporting, say, um, a forest fire simulation, or you could be simulating uh, the spread of a disease in a population. Basically, uh, the simulation is such that there are a bunch of events that happen and those events need to be processed. So in this case, in any event-driven simulation, the keys that we're talking about here correspond to the event times, the time at which an event is gonna happen. So new events can get scheduled. 
and when a new event gets scheduled it, it needs to be inserted into this priority queue so that's why we need to support this insertion operation because when a new event is scheduled it's equivalent to taking that event and inserting it into this data structure or priority queue and the key field of that event is going to be the time at which it is scheduled to happen and the data field could be anything you know it could be some information about what sort of event that is and what needs to be done to handle it so the keys are the event times and uh, we need to support insertion since new new events may get scheduled the other operation we need to schedule is we need to remove the item with the smallest key and that's because we want to pick the next event that's scheduled so what, what is the simulation in each step of the simulation what we need to do is we need to choose the next event that is scheduled in chronological order and execute that event or process that event the processing of that event may you know give rise to uh, say some new events getting created and being scheduled in the future in which case you will create new items and then insert them back into the priority queue so each step of the simulation proceeds by removing the item with the smallest key and the item with the smallest key is going to be the item that is next scheduled in chronological order because the key the values of the key are the event times so this event driven simulation is therefore an example of an application where you need to support these two operations and because these two operations need to be supported you need to have a data structure that particularly well supports these two operations different data structures are good at supporting different kinds of operations and we need a data structure in this case that is specifically good in handling these two kinds of operations so clearly a data structure that handles these two operations very well may not work properly for other kinds of applications where you need to support different sets of operations so you probably already know this uh, if you've done a course in uh, data structures another example i want to give of an application where you need these two operations is job scheduling in computer systems so in this case we are going to have we need a data structure with i of items with keys where the keys here correspond to uh, the priorities indicating the importance of the job so each job that is scheduled is an item and the key value for that item is the is is some numeric priority which indicates how important that job is so if an item has a higher priority than another item that means the corresponding job is more important so we need to schedule that job first before we schedule jobs with a lower priority so again we are going to have uh, we we need a data structure which supports two basic operations firstly because any job can because a new job can come up at any time that may need to be scheduled we need an operation whereby we can insert a new item into the data structure with its with some priority moreover the next job that we need to schedule is going to be the job with the highest priority right so we need to remove the item from the priority queue which has the largest key or the largest priority so you can see that in this application we need to support remove min in this application we need the data structure to to, to support remove max now what sort of data structure can we build to support these two operations well let's look at some possible approaches uh i guess if you have done a course in uh, in data structures one example that may come to your mind 